Good morning, everybody. It's time for work. It's interesting how quickly we get complacent with the weather. A couple of spring-like days and I run out of my house without starting my car or really preparing for the fact that my car is now or was entombed in ice. Uh, usually I'll start my car in the winter time. I mean, A, it's nice to get inside of a warm car, but more than that, defrosting the windows because scraping them off in the cold is a real pain in the ass. Welcome to Western New York. Just finishing up another fun-filled day of excitement at work. Um, I've mentioned before that I kind of work in production and uh, this particular week was a scheduled layoff week for uh, my particular facility so what happens is they kind of look at the schedule for the next few months or the year and they look at what we're producing and what needs to be produced to meet those needs and very often they'll schedule layoff weeks a few weeks in advance and say listen you know we we don't want to overproduce so we're going to cut this week of production out and then they generally use that for uh, the completion of maintenance projects or planned maintenance or uh, you know the salary organization will be working to complete any of those you know administrative projects that can't normally get done during uh, the norm, uh, course of normal production just because things happen, emergencies arise, um, there's just too much going on to get some of these little in-between things completed. So I'm working with a lot of my counterparts and it just seems to me that I don't know if it's just the general morale or mentality of employees in the 21st century, but it's kind of just it's this lackadaisical approach to, I guess, working. I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to come off like I think I'm better than anybody. I just, I think I work at a different speed. Like, I'm just driven to keep working and, and stay on task. It doesn't mean I don't, you know, take a few minutes to kind of sit down and just chat about, you know, things that are not related to work or just take a break or, or chill out. But it just seems like... Some of my counterparts are more than happy to let the whole day run out, just kind of hanging out or chilling out. And, you know, I want to kind of maximize on this time so I can use it, in, it to my advantage for when we go back into normal production. I'll have a lot of these things done and a lot of the framework and, and all that crap under my belt so that I can do my job more efficiently and effectively when I come back. Um, I don't know it's just sometimes I feel like I'm carrying the weight of others and again it's not me trying to sound like I think I'm better than people it just sometimes it's frustrating to me when I know I per put a certain amount of discretionary effort into what I'm doing and a certain level of attention to detail and I don't see the same the same kind of effort or attention to detail out of my counterparts who are working the same job, probably making somewhere in the same salary range as I am, and, and not putting as much into the job as I do. Um, I mean, let me know in the comments below, if where you guys work, you guys have, you know, the same type of thing where you feel like sometimes the people around you aren't putting in quite as much work as you are. Thank you very much. I love pretzel bagels. So I really didn't want that to come across the wrong way. I'm, I'm definitely not in, intending to come off as a conceited person or that everybody's stupid or nobody knows how to do their job because it's, it's not really how I feel. I don't, like, I, like I said, I don't feel like I'm better than people. I just look around kind of empirically and, and look at the amount of effort and, and sometimes that I put into my job. And I care a lot about my job and I take a lot of pride in my work and I think that's a big part of it. And then when I see that maybe others don't do the same, I do get frustrated. It's not even like passing judgment. It's just sometimes it's, 
you know, I, I wish other people would, would take as much pride in, in what they're doing. And I don't know, for me, I've never shown up to a job just for the paycheck. Um, yes, we all go to work to get paid. It's a system of uh, mutual benefit. We perform a service uh, for the company, and in turn, the company pays for us to have the lifestyle to which we become accustomed. And um, but I don't, I don't like to just go through the motions and check the boxes to get the paycheck and do the bare minimum. I, I take a lot of pride in what I do. So. I hope that came across the right way. You know, let me know how you guys feel, you know, in your workplace amongst your peers. You know, I, maybe I'm just in a team where there's just a lot of disparity between, you know, different levels. I've, I've been on different teams with the same company with just high performers where we're all going 100 miles an hour in a 60 mile per hour zone. And I think just right now I'm, I'm working with a team that might not be at that same speed and I'm just noticing it more. I don't know. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm going to get home and I'm going to get ready to get on my bike because I've been dying to try out this volcano route on Zwift. So it looks pretty cool, a little bit different uh, environment to be in, something different to look at instead of the same old courses. So can't wait to get out there and uh, check that out. package to open this up. Very simple stuff. What the hell? Okay, so <laughs> it's really random. So this snuggle is part of my subscribe and save, which usually comes in like the 27th of the month. It's like a box of like five or six different things like cat food and lauded detergent or Clorox wipes, just kind of pantry stuff that you get at a discount. But I don't know why it's showing up today out of the blue. This is actually what I was thinking was in that big box. They have a tendency of putting small things in a big box, but somehow, during the course of my travels, I think the last time I went skiing, I lost this little door for the side of my GoPro, for the um, the SD card, or the micro SD card, and the USB port. So, let's go get that and put this on. So this guy went missing. I don't know where it is. It'll probably turn up somewhere. But in the interim, I just bought a replacement door and we're all set to go. And then it was cheaper just to buy this little set. Comes with a little lens cap, an extra battery door, which I know where the battery door is, it's just not on. Because uh, I have a, a backpack that uh, goes on the back of this, but you have to remove the battery door. Put the battery door on right, dumbass. First day using the camera. That's nice, nice little battery door that came with it just so you have a spare. And then there's this thing. Uh, this is a, a lens cap for this guy here. Um, not the backpack, but just the housing. So you can put that on there, cover up the button, and you've got a nice little cap. I did forget to talk about this the other day. Uh, this is the new GoPro mount that I got for my um, handlebars on my bike. So I tried it out on the Aero handlebars and it actually holds very securely. Like this gets on there really tight. Like it didn't feel like it was gonna fall off the handlebars at all. But the only thing that I didn't like, and it's because I've got this monkeyed in a direction that it probably really isn't designed to be in, there was a little bit more shake in this mount portion. So I feel like if I turned it the other way, 
which it was intended to be in, where the camera is kind of facing the other direction, uh, it'd be a little bit more stable. So I'll play with this a little bit more. But in terms of its, uh, you know, its clamp on either if you wanted to put it on your seat post or your handlebar, and then the fact that it does fit on those arrow bars and it's it's completely rubberized, so it, it didn't damage the bars or leave any marks. Um, it's definitely cool. I'll try it out a little bit more as I have uh, some more experience with it. I'll try to mount it elsewhere and I'll work a little harder and getting this uh, a little bit more secure because the, the stabilization in the video was actually not able to offset that shake. I think part of it is because this thing is so heavy, um, this little backpack. I might just try it with a standard battery in there with the regular waterproof housing to see if the shake is a little bit less severe because I don't think this was designed for this this much weight on here. This thing is pretty weighty. So anyway, that was my thought on the, uh, the, uh, clip, the clamp that I got uh, last week. Who the hell is that guy and what's he doing on my Zwift? All right, I'm gonna get myself all queued up here and get ready to ride. Looks like you got volcano flat, volcano circuit uh, counterclockwise, and then the traditional volcano circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the traditional. Uh, I will do a screen capture of my ride for those of you who kinda kinda see what the circuit's like. As far as what I've seen, it's nothing, um, it's not particularly hilly. It's probably like the hilly route uh, in Watopia, from what I can tell, a few small segments, but it's not like a mountain route. So I'm gonna give that a try. Uh, like I said, I'll do a quick screen capture of it. I'll just kind of speed it up or time lapse it so you guys can get an idea. And I'll give you my thoughts when I'm done. But super excited to try out some different scenery. I've seen one or two people uh, who have done it and shown some snippets online. So it looks fun, just something different to look at, especially when you're doing your winter riding. And I'm not, I don't have any intervals or anything today. It's just kind of a solid state ride. So it'll keep me uh, interested in taking a look around. Let's go. Okay, quick hour done on the volcano route. It was actually a lot shorter than I thought it was gonna be. It's like a six minute or so loop if you do it at tempo. Um, I thought it was gonna be a little lengthier, a little more entertaining, but what it is good for is if you were gonna do something at like a race pace, it has a nice lap counter on it, so you can actually try to beat your last time around the circuit. Um, I did it counterclockwise and clockwise. I started clockwise. I like the clockwise a little bit better. It seemed to be more like always on, if that makes sense. Like it was more false flat. And then you were just constantly on the power. And if you turned it around, it was more like a false descent. And then to pick up that elevation again, there was a steeper, longer climb, if you will. I think the max grade was 5%. But uh, I liked it a little bit more that I kind of kept the tempo always on. It seemed like you weren't able to keep the power on as much when you were kind of on that false descent. But I liked it. It was entertaining. I'd do it again. I'd probably kind of go off course. The circuit was definitely short. But uh i definitely pick it up again, like I said, for like a race pace or like a, a threshold effort. I think it'd be perfect because then you can kind of go lap to lap and compete with yourself. Or if you're going to do it with a race with others, it'd be good for that too. Nothing beats a 20 minute long hot shower. But I'm going to end the vlog here, get my ass into bed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fight!